coming up on our final show of 2019. I'm I gonna think it'll be, be Black Hole Image and Exoplanet. Exo like, yeah. well. We're coming out this year. If you enjoyed that chaos, stay tuned because tomorrow begins right now. Good morning. How's everything up in the sky? What's today's roundtable about? It is about uh, Space and Review 2019 and 2020, and I feel like today's roundtable should actually be about Bridenstein uh, kicking butt and taking names, and me not calling that at all. Yep. Right? Like, in 2019, he just came in and was like, I, I, I was worried because he is a politician, right? So mm -hmm. yes. I'm, I'm going into this going, like, uh, this is not going to work. This is just a whole big political thing. NASA doesn't need more politics. NASA needs engineering. Well, that's because prior to that, people like Charlie Bolden, who is was previously an astronaut, mm -hmm. was part was held uh, a similar role. Griffin. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, Mike, well, Griffin. Michael Mike Griffin, Griffin was an engineer, an right. aerospace engineer as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. so. so we already had that kind of history of people who knew what, not to sound bad, but knew what they were talking about, you know, kind of moved up through the ranks mm -hmm. to then be in that kind of leadership. Mm -hmm. And so it's difficult when you have a complete outsider to know whether or not they're going to understand, that they're going to trust, that they're going to listen to any uh, anyone who does know what's going on or who has been there. Like, that's, I think that's diff cause for concern or cause for pause at the very least. Uh, John says, the problem is NASA lives and dies by politics. Yeah, and that's actually why, mm -hmm. so Brian right. didn't come into NASA in 2019, but I feel like 2019 is the year that he was just, he just was like flipping tables and like, yeah, fix SLS or going somewhere else. And I yeah. think Boeing went, oh, I think he's serious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think they kind of went, well, oh, well, we have to actually produce a product. It wasn't just something that was like the usual pipe dream on Twitter that you end up getting. Like he said that at a congressional hearing yeah. about SLS. Right. And that kind of made Boeing go, oh, uh, 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 build it faster, faster. But, but, so, but it's working. Yeah, right? like, it uh, is. We just did a Space News this last week where we we destroyed a uh, liquid hydrogen tank, but on purpose. Yes, right? destructive like, testing. Destructive testing, yeah. So. <laughs> the N, D, E, the N is missing out of not destructive. <laughs> There's this D, E, <laughs> destructive testing. So we do this testing, and then the week prior to that, I was like, oh, this is the SLS 2019 roundup video, because we're not gonna have any more SLS news this year. Like, it's the end of the year, how could we? Somehow they had SLS news the next yeah. week, so we're just seeing SLS after SLS. Like, SLS yeah. is making the news each week on good merit. Yeah. Not yes. on, oh, it's delayed again. Yeah, oh, right. they dropped the tank. Oh, it's way over budget again. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, they're making real progress. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. they could actually start to make these launch dates. Absolutely. So this was the year where, I, like, um, I was really worried about Bridenstine when he came in. Mm -hmm. He started to win me over with some of the SLS of, like, no, do better. Uh, and then this year is, I think, the year where I want, oh, oh, wow, he's actually quite good for NASA. Yes. Like, do, like the rest of the politics aside, and some people are bringing up some things in the room that obviously I don't agree with. Yeah, not relevant to this conversation from the NASA side of things. Mm -hmm. He seems to be kicking butt and taking names. Yeah, I was I was particularly worried too because of some of the past stuff that he had done in terms of like climate science, and yep. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, oh, that's don't you worry. Now I'm not bringing it up on the screen because that defeats the, like that's not this conversation. But you know, <laughs> yeah, there's oh, a multitude yeah. of things we all know. Um, but like when he, I think what really won me over with him. So first of all, I was you. You all probably saw I was like completely like 100% opposed to him getting put in place because um, I was so worried about all these things happening. Yep. But um, I guess every time I can, I always try to admit I was also not only was I 100% against him, I was 100% wrong in how he was going to end up running NASA. Uh, he's just blown us away and just been absolutely amazing with it. Um, and what really set me up in knowing that Bridenstein was actually going to end up being pretty good um, was that he went to JPL, he went to their, clients, their climate science laboratory and sat down and said, tell me everything you know, straight up. I just, just tell me everything you know, show me the data. And like, I don't know a lot of people that have ever done that, that have been in that kind of a position to well, come I was gonna in say, Also, most people switching. don't have that position so. of power to be able to do True. that. True. Yeah. <laughs> but, but he was in that position and yes. he didn't have to do that. I think. No, right, he right, did right. not. He did his due diligence. That's exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what we're all saying is that 
he he understood that maybe he didn't know everything about everything, everything yeah. about the industry. That is a hilarious picture. Thinking very oh, hard. Oh, <laughs> <that> was, oh. <laughs> a, oh, like I feel like we could have done better. Like we're not doing him justice we're, on this. We're screen. all rusty, and that includes Jenna. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe this is maybe this I'm is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is definitely his SLS face. <laughs> the, yeah. So. <laughs> Really guys. Uh, so. I, but, oh. but again, to be fair, and very much so to his credit, he did his due diligence. He went through, he he talked to the people who do know what's going on, and he he figured it out. And he yeah. actually absorbed the information. He didn't just do it uh, for lip service or for any sort of publicity of, yeah. I went to JPL and I talked to the experts. Like, no, he really did it. And I, I think that should be commended. Yeah. I think, I, what, I think what's interesting, too, is that he's made decisions that have been opposite of the people who threw him into that position as well. So he's showing himself that he He's like beholden to no one but NASA. So that, that is a better picture. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, much better. I, I realize it's not <laughs> resolution, but at least you get at least it's like an action pose. Like, he's not all like yeah. all up in yeah. your face. All up in your face. Yeah. Who wrote that comment that was just up? Yeah, yeah, I thought that was that a good comment. I wanted to ask you guys about. Do you know how much SLS is actually costing right now? Because I we're up to uh, aren't we up to seventeen billion at this point? Several what? billion per year. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah, do we I, throw I, I, do we throw Aries Five into the mix? Mm. Yeah, so yeah, so. yeah, you know, actually that's <laughs> yeah, a great yeah. question so because this. where does where does SLS begin and Constellation end? And the, I think the I feel like the answer is everything is in the same bucket, right? So sure. Ari, Constel, SLS, <laughs> all the words. Yeah, SLS is born out of Aries Five, which means that all of Aries Five development should that like those cost centers should go into the total price of SLS because. That's how all of that came to be. Yeah. So I, th I think that's what's fair. Uh, to that point, like, there's a whole lot of discussion going on because we're talking about Brian Stein. How he's I like this one though. I know. How hard can it be? They had the engines, the tanks just put together, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's just a piece of. It's just you know, it's just a piece of cake. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure it was super easy to turn Falcon Nine to Falcon Heavy. Oh right, yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah, it was a piece of cake to do that. <laughs> but so. but this is still the the current gripe. The space yeah. launch system is making progress, oh, yeah. but it's still too expensive and too expendable for the long term. Yeah, I think yep. it's part of the problem. Yeah. The space launch system is a rocket that was designed in you know 2004. R wow. Is that right. Cool? Yeah. Because that's when Ares wow. 5 came around. Oh, yeah. Sure. And so, I mean, nobody was thinking about reusable rockets at the time that, that the space launch system yeah. was a thing. I mean, even. That is an untrue statement Wait. and unfair. Okay. So, nobody was working. Shoot down against. Oh! Yeah. So, <laughs> nobody. Okay. I look. I angry and aggressive real quick, didn't I? Okay. Yeah. Let me go back a little bit here. Let me rephrase that. Um, internet didn't see that. Uh, so, <laughs> Who nobody was taking. Nobody outside of a, of a handful of companies was taking reusability seriously because everybody looked sure. at the space shuttle and said it can't be done. So Right. Well, but, and we had the, right. uh, we even did um, history segments on Space News. It was the uh, X-33, Venture Star. Mm -hmm. uh, DCX. DCX. Yeah. Did I say, it was X-33, yeah. X, well, X-33 was in competition with DCX. Right, right, right. And it's one, it, it, one of the reasons... Those were that, the two. It was those two. They yeah. were competing, and then NASA wa really wanted X-33, so they killed DCX. But, um, and then X-33 ended up sort of screwing up and not But the point working, is, those so. were NASA. Yes. Right? And so that was NASA mm -hmm. making an, ex uh, an expendable, reusable rocket mm -hmm. way before it was cool, way before... There you go. Way before SpaceX, yep. before all of it. Um, the, in fact, a lot of the reusable companies go to the data from these programs Absolutely. to figure out how they're going to do it. Yeah. And so they had reusability in the brain mindset mm -hmm. prior to Ares 5 and still. Yeah, there you go. Oh, my favorite. Yeah. Yes. So you know what? Internet, go and uh, you need to search for, there's like really great video, old oldie timey video of it launching. Uh, translating over mm. and then land yeah. and hovering and then landing. And it again. doesn't just, I, in one of the videos, it doesn't just like translate, it like flips sideways to translate and then oh, cuts yeah. back. Oh, and then I haven't comes seen down. that one. Yeah, that, that's called the swan dive flight because it kind of swan dives back to the ground. And it's, it's a beautiful flight. Oh, wow. By the way, like this Olympics. was all happening in the early 90s. <laughs> yeah, early, exactly. Wow. Just a reminder, early 90s. But that's ultimately so. my point is that <laughs> yeah. NASA was working on reusability before anyone else. Why didn't they get there first? 
I, I know, this is 2019 in review, and now we're in the 90s. How, how, great, <laughs> how great is that? Go figure. How great is that? I wasn't going to say like a few more decades. Okay, but, but, but then you go back to up to S Space Launch System. NASA was working on this in the 90s. Space Launch System is using a fully reusable rocket engine. Dare I say, one of the most impressive engines ever, operational engines ever built to date. Well, dare you not say, it is the most impressive Operation. liquid propulsion uh, rocket engine that's ever been made. I mean, RS-25, mm -hmm. uh, RS you could, uh, it, not only did it have ridiculous specific impulse on it and efficiency and, and engineering with it, you could reuse it. Raptor and BE-4. So, well, I mean, mm. okay. Okay, Let's, right. So you should we rephrase that, that flown Operate, engines? Well, yeah, operational. <laughs> uh, that's why you said operational. Well, actually, never mind. Uh, Raptor's technically been flown. I bet, I'll bet, <laughs> I'll be at like only yeah. 100 meters or so, so. Yeah, but it hasn't gone to space. Like, yeah. there's, there's gotta be a, it went to space. Yeah, but those like yeah. flew 20, 25 times each. That's what I'm saying, operational. And only, only one of them didn't work on one shuttle flight. No, that's not true. More than, well, so you had an ATO. Well, yeah, I Yeah, SDS 51F, they had to shut one down. Yeah, so you had to find not working. Because we had one where we, we stuck a, actually, you're right, it was only one, because I was going to argue STS-91, where the golden rod ripped through the engine uh, yeah. bell and it began. Or 93, STS-93. SDS-93, you're right, yeah. you're right, yeah. 93. We have that whole, th whole history. Yeah, whole, that whole yeah. thing, yeah. go back. <laughs> Holy that. smokes. It's like ripped. space debate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, are you familiar with STS-93? This is way over my head. I have oh. no idea what's going on. All right, on. so check this out. So for anyone who doesn't know, STS-93 is Quickly. my- Quickly. I'll, I'll be, I'll be, you have an entire video. My on favorite this. asset like as well. So don't worry. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like Jared, the ultimate Jared, asset. Oh, Jared oh my and I. God. Yeah. Yes. Ugh. This this mission is crazy and it's real. Quickly. Okay. Uh, ish. Okay. So STS ninety three. Uh, the engines ignite and we lift off the pad and moments later a golden rod uh, gets ejected out of the engine and rips through basically the base the nozzle part of the engine itself, and it, it rips through the cooling lines mm -hmm. in that nozzle. Now, you, it, could, and you could lose five of them, it ripped three of them. Yeah, if you lose five of them, it's a, it's a loss of crew and vehicle. Whoa. Game over. Game over, yeah. right? That's it. Yeah. Like, vehicle can't survive that. They lost three, so they had, Whoa. they were just on the Surviving edge. On two, the yeah. problem is, um, is this the shot from 93? Yeah, right up yeah, there. you can see, so that, the, uh, the uh, starboard side engine it's with that. that, the combustion instability right up over there, this? right? It's right there. <laughs> that. Oh, I'm sorry, That's you're it. right. It's the, yes. So. Ah, <laughs> I'm just randomly pointing to the screen. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, so. This thing? Yes. Yeah, so. Th That's a little extra hydrogen. Right. Uh, it's, so, it, but it's not like putting nitrous in your car's engine. Here's the thing so. though, that it ripped through a bunch of things, including the engine. So. Uh, it also ripped through some of the sensors. So they lift off the pad and like, like uh, it's fairly normal calls. They clear the tower. Oh. Yep. And all of a sudden you hear the commander from the yeah. vehicle call down. She says something like, we've got a pH fuel cell number one, um, which is mm -hmm. really freaking bad also because the mm -hmm. sensors on, all, on the vehicle and whatnot are basically saying, hey, these these systems aren't working, and then they the mission controllers start going, Oops. hey, we've lost engine controllers on the center engine, engine controllers on the right engine, we're on backup controllers on this engine, this engine is not working correctly, we've got problems with the solid rocket motors. By the way, go at throttle up. <laughs> so they're just like, it is this, a uh, constant flurry of like problem, 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 problem. Well, and people problem, talking over problem. each other because yeah. you know y this person has a problem, this person has sees a different problem, this person sees a different problem. Everyone has to talk to Capcom, Capcom has, yeah. and like it. The coordination is really amazing. The video wow. that is done, there's an older video, there's a newer video. Uh, both of them are done really, really well. Uh, it's hard to follow all of it, yeah. uh, but it is yeah. amazing and it is incredible that it all ended up working. Yeah. Anyhow, wow. that's why it's my favorite mission. Yeah. I love to show that wow. one just because like there are too many people talking in the first 30 seconds. Oh yeah, seconds. easily. So, if if you want to hear, by the way, <laughs> NASA at its finest. Exactly. Yes. Because it was Never like, once are you like, ah! Yep. Every no single was, time somebody's like, hey, this is a thing. Yes, that is a thing. Uh, absolutely, you have a thing. Great, you have a thing. You have a thing and you have a thing. How's this oh. thing going? Your thing is okay. Your thing is worse. Your thing is better. Great. You have a thing. You have, oh, you have another thing. Like they just And then they're very, like, and go. Yep. And you're still go, and you're still go, and they made it to orbit. NASA <laughs> oh at its gosh. finest, it is, it what shows. What is this? 
1999. Uh, oh. ST, just search our channel for STS-93. Have, yeah. We have the mission control loops, <clears throat> raw, unedited, essentially, ish, yeah. right? We're not all of them. All, not all of the loops, but enough of them that you can hear them. And then we actually have translations up on the screen. Because so you need those. You need yeah, them in order to follow along. Because there's people talking on top yeah. of other people. Much like could, this show. And yeah. that, was, that was a pretty big mission, too. Uh, that was Eileen Collins as commander, and she, this was the first time a woman was a commander of a wow. spacecraft. Yep. So and look at how she uh, yes. back on the <laughs> And also, uh, Chandra, which was the heaviest payload uh, shuttle ever launched. So wow. Don is pulling us back on ta yes. task here, right? So there are four I RS-25. I can't believe those beautiful pieces of machinery are just going to end up in the Atlantic. Well, maybe Jeff Bezos can go grab them. I hope so. <laughs> would be nice. I mean, probably. Maybe oh, he could man. put one on a new Shepard. You know, knowing him, he probably already has. Just hasn't told anyone yet. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. How much of SLS is going to be reusable percentage-wise? Like 70%? Zero. What? Wait, what? Wait well, maybe second. if you count Orion. Why are we Orion talking about reusability? Yeah, I was going to say, like, the humans on board, I guess. So. <laughs> humans on board. Yeah, the spacecraft that sits on top, the payload it brings up, uh, that's reusable. <laughs> But the rocket itself, the entire rocket, uh, all yeah. of it, the avionics, the engine, the reusable engines. The engines are reusable. Okay. The engines were reusable. Oh, so there's not 0%? No, no. 0%. No, no. The engines were reusable on they the space were. shuttle. We used them on the space shuttle. We're putting them on SLS. They were designed oh. to be reusable. But on SLS, we're going to take the whole thing and dump it in the ocean, yep. engines included, and we will not recover. Including, it. wait, so John's asking about the solid rocket boosters. Same? Oh, that's actually I believe really those good. are actually Quite. supposed to be expensive. They were going to reuse I got you, John. them. I, I, I know you asked that like 20 to. minutes hang on, ago. Hang on. Say, they, they were going to reuse them, but now, now they're not going to. To maintain the recovery fleet, to, re, to pull, get the boosters back, uh, disassemble them, send them back to Colorado for reconditioning and, and putting more propellant in them, they, they think is too expensive for the number of flights that they're going to be making. And so they're not going to reuse them. They're going to be right. expendable. Yeah, so... And that's the other thing with, so for if you, because I know no one has their ears in. I yep. was gonna. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Donna basically said they were gonna. No, they're not gonna. It's too expensive to fish the boosters out of the ocean to reuse them. It's basically the same price to build new ones, which was the same case with Space Shuttle. Yeah. Which I don't necessarily, like the whole point of reusability isn't just to reuse it. It needs to be to lower the cost and access yeah. space. And if you're not doing that, then do it different. Yeah. <laughs> Figure it out. Yeah. Lower your cost of space. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, that's the Orion capsule on the right-hand side, oh, and uh, an earlier or later slit. Earlier model of this it, one? That's the later. Or, that's later. later one? It doesn't yeah, look it doesn't like, doesn't look like uh, the Hugo <laughs> Drax Corporation is mm -hmm. launching it. All right, so I spent, um, I spent like 10 minutes on Bridenstine and SLS. Although I feel like, you know what, 2020 is going to be the year of SLS, I think. You think so? Well, we're not going to fly in, tw in 2020. No, yeah. I mean, no, they but, say they are, but they're not. I thought they pushed us. When was uh, didn't they push out to 2021? I thought it was still like a quarter for 2020. Cool, yeah, 2021. Oh, yeah. We all know it's 2021. Yeah. Okay. But like this is like just like these last few weeks, it's been like SLS positive news, SLS positive news. I think that's going to be a continuing yes. trend mm -hmm. because Bridenstine is going to force SLS to have positive news, and if they don't, then he's going to be like, "What the hell?" He's going to he's kicking ass and taking names. Yeah. You know. So that was mine. It's good stuff. Yeah, it is. It is. I, I know he didn't start in 2019, but this was the year he truly run like he came he into his own. Completely, he came into his own and completely and totally won me over. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I was gonna revert to something we were saying before about um. Well, yeah, I remember now. It was about um. Why is it that we were talking back in the 90s about reusability, and it's just now 2019, and we're finally kind of doing stuff with. I mean, even though SLS now we just agreed isn't actually reusable. <laughs> right. But um, I wanted to bring up a point that actually I was watching on the last roundtable uh, several months ago um, that was made that was about, you know, obviously the change of, of administration so frequently it's mm -hmm. going to change mm -hmm. the uh, priorities the as far sure. as like programs go. So obviously I think that's a major cause, but I also think it's just like what's interested in like the public eye, like how many people are actually taking interest in this and how many people are actually voting. For these types of things. Sure. So I think what I like about what Burdenstein is doing, with this his name, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what I like about essentially what he's doing is that by bringing and pushing more of a positive message on SLS, mm -hmm. that's not only getting to other like news outlets and media, but to people that are not even in space mm. that are saying, oh, wow, there's actually something really cool that NASA's developing that's like really going to possibly change the way that we look at space travel. Awesome. I think I'm going to like vote for this. And then that can parlay into the next like maybe two to three more administrations beyond from now that we can even imagine. Well, who, who do you think is doing that better, SpaceX or Bridenstine? 
Um, like, like if, if you were to vote on space and get excited about space, I think more who, people, makes you more, who makes you more excited, SLS or SpaceX? I still think more people are for SpaceX just because like that's really made more of a public eye and, mm -hmm. and a lot more, I mean, there's so many memes about it. I kind of judge a lot of things based it's on how popular kind of, memes are on Instagram and Twitter. For me, this <laughs> SpaceX bringing people and exciting them is kind of, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword with it. It's for... There's some yeah. good that comes with it. There's also some bad. I always joke. Definitely. I always joke that I remember when Space Flight Now there was a comment section, and then SpaceX came along. You know, <laughs> uh, it was kind of like Bro, that. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, like, I, I don't want to necessarily say that like a lot of uninformed people start jumped into the game because a lot of those uninformed people are now very well informed about how rockets work because sure. when you have to wait multiple years for something to actually happen, you end up learning that oh yeah, physics is a thing, and you can't like circumvent physics no matter how bad you want to. Challenge accepted. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Like, Uh-oh, is that another, uh, am I going to have to eat another rocket engine with that one? Oh, yeah, that's right. 2019 is the year you lost the bet I about did. Uh, Starhopper and Starship. I bet I was very happy to lose. So. <laughs> Wait, what was this bet again? Remind me? Uh, Star, God, I don't remember the details. It was something along um, the lines of... So we made the, we made the bet back in March of 2018, I want to say, and it was yeah. basically if Starhopper clears, I think it was 91 meters, something like that, oh. um, uh, then I would eat uh, well, <laughs> once intentionally, <laughs> once <laughs> accidentally, uh, you know, that was a good, uh, I mean, hey. You know wait, even the control room laughs. Can't, I, can't, Go on. I, I can't describe the story. Much like Blue too. Origin, we found out about the, the second suborbital hop of... Uh, Explain of, to uh, Athena what happened. I don't okay, so, uh, hey, oh, so no. we put in a bet that basically, I, I jokingly said I'm going to eat an RS-25, the space shuttle main engine, with mustard if... If Star Wars. there's mustard in the fridge? Yes, uh, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. I was there's like, why is there the fridge? Yeah. Which I've eaten water. like a third of the mustard, by the way, because it's delicious. <laughs> and by the way, Athena, for context, an RS25 will not fit in this room. No. Requires. Which yeah. Kyrian did not know when we first started tomorrow slash uh, Space Vacast back right. in the day. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that you would need to fit an RS25 engine in So no we idea. had the deadline of December 31st, 2019, and I okay. thought I actually had a chance that maybe I was going to win this bet. Oh. What would I have won? The thing is, I I knew he had uh, no chance, and I was so, going to enjoy this moment. Okay, oh so whatever. Um, so uh, eventually, late August, I don't remember the exact day, uh, it flies. And then I go, okay, I've lost the bet. Oh so my god! You still haven't done it though. I like, have a great we still idea. haven't because we've got it. We've got to figure out a way to actually like make this. How about happen. I bake a cake of it? And okay. then you got to eat the cake with mustard. Okay, here's the problem terrible. though. I would Chocolate. like I would like this to be something that I would actually enjoy eating. Like this is not jackass or can, fear. Can we factor. get like a hot dog. So, uh, yes. Uh, like or or like stick, something. All right. No, no, no. If an RS twenty oh. five was made of spare ribs, would you eat it? No. You oh yeah, there it is. There it is. A gigantic hamburger. Yep. There's me. Losing. There's Jared losing the first time. Yes. We can now, totally make something <laughs> now that looks like that. here's the thing, Athena. He lost twice. I, I did. did. I can't comment on this at all, so, so I will defer back so, to Jared. Remember the Starship? You know they were fuel. They're pressure testing it, and it yeah. blew its top. Yeah. So and the top apparently flew higher than than its <laughs> first top. So that means that I technically lost it. Because it made its twice test. Lost because of that. We didn't say it had to so, fly intact. We just that's said it true. Had to fly. We just said that a part of we just said Starhopper has to make it. So. So there you go. I lost twice. Wow. So. All right. Well Raul done. Santos on our chat room is trying to bring this round table back, mm -hmm. back into the whole thing, uh, asking favorite space oh. moment of 2019. Ooh. Do I have you know, to pick let's, one? Let's go around this way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ooh, give, favorite you know what? space moment. Uh, kind of like give me your top three if you can't decide on one. Oh, three? Oh, come <laughs> on, Jared. <laughs> um, Start okay. at the beginning of the year. Do it uh, chronologically. So I would say uh, number three definitely has to be uh, New Horizons flyby of Arakoth. Um, mm. uh, Gazoon type. Thank you. Uh, because that was just like like the furthest object we've ever explored, four mm. billion miles away from us. Uh, so far away, the sun has never influenced it. So that means that we're literally looking at the primordial solar system, which is literally us. Like that's the stuff we're made of. Mm. Right. Like that is absolutely absurdly amazing um, that we're able to take a look at that and still getting, still downloading the data from the flyby, by the way, and probably still another year left uh, in downloading all that data. So hmm. it's gonna be really cool to see all the results coming out pretty soon. Um, number two, I, I, number two, it's so hard because I have to kind of like do two things in one. I have to say, uh, 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 demo one was awesome, and seeing Falcon Heavy become operational was awesome as well. 
um, with that. And then uh, number one for me is definitely the Event Horizon Telescope uh, finally putting out the image of the black hole in MS7. Yeah. Yeah. Black hole. That was this year oh, for me. Yeah. my God. That, that was like, yeah. that and the gravi observing gravitational waves are like two holy grails in, in astrophysics and like, we got them within the same decade, within yeah. three years of each other. Like, holy smokes. Um, that was just amazing being able to see that image and then, like, realize that when we were looking at something, like, just a couple times bigger than the solar system, uh, you know, 50 million light years away from us. Like, both, like, wow, it's a black hole, and, like, also, wow, we have, like, this incredible technology to pull that off, so. Wow. Those, and those we're looking at demo yeah. one those on are the them's. screen right now. That's the... Yeah. Uh, that's the Wait, what is yes. this? That's Demo 1. That's the Dragon oh, spacecraft. Okay. I believe it is currently docked to the International Space Station. There's some weird flares on the side, but yeah. the nose cone's open and I see hardware. Yeah. So it looks like it's docked. Yep. Yeah, that, it is. Yeah, yeah, there you go. The curvature of the Earth. Yeah. Oh, there's hey, the black hole. Hey, don't you go. Wanna, this is my favorite event of the year. So, yep. um, although Why? it's number three for you, this is my number one. Why? Why? Um, because when it came well. out, um, I actually, it was such a special day for me because when it came out, I was actually on a shoot. Um, Shooting for like uh, some Macy's thing. I don't know. Anyway, so I Ooh, made everyone stop a model on the shooting for Macy's. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Gina. Nice. Oh my god! Just let them wow! Like, what is happening right I, now? Wow! I, I was on a model shoot. Don't mind me. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> is yeah. turning you colors. <laughs> wow. So anyway, yes, I was on this model shoot, and uh, no, but I. I remember when, when the image came out, because the press conference was going on while we had just started shooting, I made everyone stop the shoot, and I pulled up my laptop and was like, we have to watch this. Oh my god, like, that's amazing. This is, yes. Oh my yes. god, it was Y'all just need so to do that too in good. your respective fields. Make yes. people stop and watch these amazing space events. It was just, yeah, it was awesome. Like everyone, no one knew what it was. They're like, what, what are we watching? And I was like, you guys have no idea. And they're like, it looks like a donut, and I'm like, <laughs> I know. And then like just telling them like everything about it and how like it shows the warping of space time, and it's just oh, it's so freaking cool. But um, so that 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 was really monumental for me. I mean, it definitely was a huge breakthrough for um, for astrophysics in general. The second event, I would say. Um, Although it was like on New Year's Day, it was when Event Horizon flew back. It counts. Ultima Thule. It counts. Yeah. So that that was exciting. Also, because it had like it was a special day for me. Like I was with my mom and brother, and it was obviously New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. and we had like the countdown happening on TV. Um, so I think it was right around um, yeah midnight for East Coast time. So we had just yes. I was gonna bring it to set actually the three D printed one. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> Should I go grab but, it? Yeah, go grab it. Totally. I'll go yay! grab it. The peanut. So I don't know, this was just exciting because I was telling everyone about it. Um, I, I did a random video where I, I built a cardboard box around me trying to make it look like New Horizons and went wait, to wait, my no, park go, in Brooklyn. Go to the camera and do it and yeah, walk around that um, way. Oh, should I, should I? In front of the camera. Uh, okay, which way? Wait, hang on, you should do it behind the set. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is going to be amazing. This is, this is either amazing, this is the cheesiest thing we've done. <laughs> There's Ultimate Thule flying by. Yeah, you're welcome, Internet. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm going to make that into a gift later. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> that is incredible. You're welcome, Alan Stern. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that, that oh. was just awesome. Again, because it was just a special moment and telling family about it and telling a bunch of people that aren't in space about it. it just, it was awesome. And look at it. It's oh, so here. cute. Wee! Yeah. It's just, I don't know. It's so cute. So it reminds me of Olaf from Frozen. Oh, yeah. Um, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Space snowman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would say now the third space event of the year. Um, I mean, I did love the hover test of Starship Hopper. I, I definitely think that was really cool because uh, I'd say that was probably my third favorite. I mean, there were so many good launches. Um, also, like ISRO, Chandrayaan 2. That was incredible. It was a good um, year for ISRO, actually. Yeah, really yeah, good year for ISRO. Yeah, they've been yeah. kicking butt and taking names. Yeah, they really have. Great. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that was really cool. Um, but definitely, I mean, just watching Starship Hopper, because again, that, that was like a science fiction movie and mm. um, the, the amount of people that were, that I had shared the video with and, and seeing feedback from, from t total strangers that aren't even in space. They just were like, this is like a movie. I can't believe this is real. Here we go. It's real. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, their GSLV Mark III vehicle, I think. Mm. Can't remember. So someone on the internet will correct me. How about you, Carrie Ann? So cool. Uh, you don't have to do three, like just like. Whoop, yeah, no, I'm not going to do three. Uh, <laughs> it, I mean, it it is hard to narrow a lot of it down, uh, but I I think demo one. Um, oh, I yeah. think in a very similar way that uh, the Falcon Heavy demo mission went, it connected a lot of people with a stupid stuffed animal. 
Mm, right? Yeah, like, the little uh, so, earth. Yeah. What do you call them earthy? Little earth. earth. Little earth. That right? Was yeah. Um, so, you know, they had this cute little plushie. Which, by inside. the way, the astronaut stole little earth. Yes. It's still on space station. Yeah. Excuse you. You put it in the capsule. I mean, SpaceX put Not it in the capsule. Cheap, so that's fair game. It back. It's uh, fair game. We're, well, we're sending people to go get it back. Well, because okay. nobody wanted to put M and M's in the capsule. That's what happened. Well, so, look, if you're gonna okay. grab the, uh, if you're gonna grab the Earth, at that least. was the debate. No. M&Ms are earthy? No, 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 earthy no, no, right not there. exactly. So right there, uh, for the uh, the X Prize, uh, where you had to prove the, I can't talk. Somebody help me out here. The they had M and M's. Okay. They, oh, uh, the uh, Ansari X Prize. Thank you, Ansari X Prize. Okay. I'm like the thing with the stuff oh, and the other yeah. thing. Uh, there's a little, yeah. Hi, friends. So cute. Uh, which is funny because there was already a dummy, not dummy, in the capsule. You know, a humanoid. Ripley. Yes, Ripley was amazing. Yeah, and, like, yeah. She's really cool, and she, like all the different like nodes and everything that she had on her to make sure that uh, everything would be safe for humans. Mm -hmm. Like that, that was really cool in and of itself. But there was something a little bit different, strangely enough, about this little about this little plushie, and I just thought that yeah. that was really cute. There and there Ripley. she is. She's yep. so great. Um, mm -hmm. I, there, yeah, I, I think in a similar way to what Jared's reaction was to hearing about. Uh, Falcon Heavy having the Tesla in it, of like, that's the dumbest idea, why would you do that, that's so stupid, I don't get it, the whole nine, uh, and Starman, of course, yeah, see, that's the, I love it. The best but the same behind. kind of thing about the plushie was like, really, we're, it's a stuffed animal thing we're putting up there? Like, that's what's gonna do a thing? When, who really, and oh, it's gonna be floating, and who really, I don't know, I had all of that going into it, but then after seeing it, everyone's reaction to it, yeah. and how, like, this company, uh, sold out completely. Yep. All okay. over the place, and they didn't expect it. They were like, "We don't know what happened." Yeah. Oh god! I was gonna say, didn't tell them. Up at Griffith wow. Observatory, right. we had those <laughs> for like, like a, a couple day. hours. Couple <laughs> hours. A couple right. hours. Oh my god! So. And, yeah. As soon as anyone heard that they were anywhere, everyone got sold out, and yeah. I think that's really amazing. And there's mm -hmm. there's something that says something to me about that connection. That's mm -hmm. you know absolutely, and that's that's what touches me. And so that's was the most significant thing to me, even though there were other things that were really amazing and, you know, for human space flight and for not necessarily human space flight, um, you know, a couple of people in the, in the chat room mentioned, like, uh, China uh, on the dark side of the moon, right? The Ultima Thule was an am amazing thing. Um, the unfortunate part that ISRO's lander didn't really make it, mm -hmm. um, you know, but the orbit. Yeah, but it was still an event. It, it, it was. was event. It, yeah. brought, it was a really exactly. cool exactly. event, and it really, like, yeah. it, it brought, brought a lot people of people together. together. Yeah. Yeah. That's thing, exactly it. The thing, too, is that ISRO got data out of that. Yeah. 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 They uh, they got a tremendous amount of uh, descent and landing data out of that. So they, uh, I'm pretty sure with Xiang Yun 3, they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. so. There's this weird so as well. like binary, either you succeeded or you didn't. Right. right. So you crash in the moon, you didn't land, you didn't meet your primary objective, so you failed. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, yeah. like in aerospace, that is not how it works Definitely at not. all. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's a whole lot of gray in between. Like mm -hmm. just because you missed that last step, Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that you didn't yeah. get every other step in between correctly, and yeah. that you didn't learn a lot of things along the way. Wait, that what's allows the you to saying? Do and cooler things. You know, with failure, you learn a lot more from failure than you do from success. Yeah. Success just basically says, "Yeah, you've done this all correctly," mm -hmm. and it can make you, you know, complacent about things. Mm -hmm. um, with failure, you really learn a lot, and that's uh, that's that's tremendously important. Chris Hugman was funny, and Gary just put it at the bottom of the screen, which is looking forward to the next year when SpaceX lands a Cybertruck on the moon. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. a big event as Made well. Me laugh. <laughs> Poor thing, it's not going to be able to drive around. Made me laugh. Uh, it's going to get yeah. stuck. Also, We Be Good did make note that we have a teeny tiny round table for our round table discussion. You're welcome, Internet. <laughs> yes, that's welcome. We actually have a few round tables <laughs> going on here, yeah. uh, which s seems legit for us. Seems legit. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The moon. What are you looking forward to in 2020? Wait, well, you didn't answer the question, though. Oh, what my favorite? favorite space. Yeah, one. come on. So, 2019. Uh, what the program. No. I like all of. <laughs> actually, I'm. Yeah. I I think I I tend to favor the kind of the answer that Carrie Ann had, which is anything <laughs> that uh, touches non-space people, anything that kind of creates a little bit of a ripple through humanity, and 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 touches the general populace so that they go. Oh wow, that's really cool. I'm excited for that. I'm excited for this better future. And so I think uh, demonstration mission one from SpaceX did a little bit of that. That was kind of this, like there was a little ripple. You, you could feel that ripple. Uh, you know, moving past, you know, backwards into 20, before 2019, Falcon Heavy demo one 
was also another one of the, that was a bigger ripple. I feel like that yeah. one, mm-hmm. that one, that was yeah. a little more of a shock wave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I like those ripples. I think the beer sheet lander was a little ripple. And mm-hmm. I, I thought that was a really cool one. I thought demo one was a little ripple. And I think any time that you see things like that occur, and that's why I'm not, um, you know, we're really hard on SLS on the show, mostly because it deserves it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm excited for with SLS is creating that ripple mm-hmm. and, and having humanity go, wow, yeah. that's an incredible rocket. Price doesn't, like time, price, whatever, that ripple matters. That mm-hmm. touching of humanity matters. Yep. Landing on the moon is something that I'm excited for. Mm-hmm. The Artemis proje- program. Mm-hmm. Pro- project? Program? Which is program. A program. Say program. Um, that's actually kind of exciting. Yeah. Gateway, not so much, but Artemis itself, like landing on the moon. Yeah. Like yeah, that, yeah. that I can get behind that. Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, that's the, uh, yeah. that's a beer, beer sheet. sheet. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. With some unannounced tardigrades <laughs> on board. Tardigrades. So, yeah. Yeah, but so yeah, that, that's what that's what I enjoyed. I enjoyed yeah. the space moments where, where there's our neighbors are playing very loud music, and so you saw a moment where we all just stopped because we all started listening to their music. Yeah, <laughs> you not probably, good. You probably like can't hear it on probably point. can't hear it on camera, but like, oh, it's, it's I it's, can it's, kind of feel it in the floor. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, so, it's creating yeah. little ripples. It's like my, yeah, yeah, my coffee is. Yeah, Thanks, guys. T Rex right. is coming. So, let's go around. Let's go around for what you're looking for forward to in 2020. I have a lot that I'm looking for. All right, well, give it to us, Jared. I'm looking forward to the 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 re the reignition of interest in human spaceflight again. Do because you think that'll happen in 2020. Yeah, because we're going to start flying American astronauts in American vehicles on American rockets, <laughs> mostly uh, to the International Space Station. So only six um, months out. Which I mean, pretty pretty cool that we're doing that, um, and a lot of people have noticed that. I feel like. There's going to be the sort of like SpaceX is going to bring in people, and then also Starliner with Boeing is going to bring in people too, mm. because mm-hmm. Boeing is like I think Virgin is though as well. I just yeah. d- don't you beat me to my thing. Well, I'm going to debate because, you on that. Don't leave them out because <laughs> Virgin's also going to start flying people, and hopefully Blue Origin will tell us that they're going to start flying people. <laughs> Blue Origin will tell us that they already did, point. and it's hang fine. On, and on, I don't believe hang them, on. and I, don't I want to give Blue Origin props because they yes. have they have been webcasting their experimental yes. flights. Yes. Yeah. How many companies webcast experimental flights? Not right. very many. Yeah. I right. mean, there's one. Yeah. Okay, there's yeah. one. I can think of one. You can think of one. So. Can you think of two? Blue Origin. Other than Blue Origin. That's my point. Like, <laughs> I, I, yeah, they do run quietly. Um, and as space nerds, we want to get excited by Blue Origin because um, what they're doing is exciting and we want <laughs> them to, um, like, Tickle our humanity is the word that came to mind, but I don't know. <laughs> That's, uh, Tickle uh, humanity. Help me yeah. out, internet. What were the real words I was looking for there? Yeah. Inspire uh, humanity. Yeah, yeah. They, they, we want to be inspired by Blue Origin. We yeah. really want to. And yeah. I understand where they're coming from, which is like, we'll get there. Yes. But let us figure our stuff out first, and then we'll loop around and inspire you. And we're all like, but we want it now. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Go skins off of YouTube and St. Alex in the chat room say Rocket Lab. Uh, have they. Did they? Well, I mean, they did the test flight, of their first flight of Electron. Right. Was streamed. Did that have mm-hmm. real payload on it, or did it have a... Uh... It had a, uh, well, Peter said it had a Humanity Star. The first Humanity You know, I'll star. buy it. Yeah. You know, I'll buy that. Rocket Lab. Oh. Yeah, I'll buy, I'll buy Rocket yeah. Lab. Okay. I was going to say, there's been a couple times where uh, Max Hoda at, at Launcher has, broad, has live webcasted rocket engines. Okay, right. I take it oh, all back. Oh, yeah. So, I take it all back. There's, yeah, there's a few. It's just, it's just not the bigger names, I think, yeah. is what you're saying. Um, we, well, I think you know, it's a fair point. They, they could choose not to broadcast their tests, is my point. Yes, right? and everybody could. They not only broadcast their tests, but give us telemetry and follow the vehicle in a compelling way. Yes. And, like, certainly there are things I would change about their webcast, but, like, they, they do it. Yeah. And, like, kudos to them for actually doing it. Because there was a time when they didn't do it. You don't have to. Yeah. You don't have to. Nobody There's no expectation. To. No no one has to. They're private companies. They don't have to do anything. That, yeah. Right? <clears throat> yeah. So kudos to them for doing that. So obviously, like, lots of human space flight happening at that time. I'm also, like, super excited for what will be the beginning of... You, you believe 2020 is the year that humans will really start going into space? Yeah. Like, en masse. Like, Virgin... I'm counting Virgin Galactic as going to space. En masse? Yeah. Right now, Russians are bringing up three people at a time. En masse is any more than three. 
Yeah. What well, kind of? Yeah. Well, okay, I just want to be clear. I'm, I'm not saying at a time. You say in like, mass, like hundreds of people. I was imagining hundreds. I, don't, well, gonna, <laughs> you think, I think we're going to see three to four times more people fly to space in in 2020 than we have fair. in 2019. I you think, think that's fair. A hundred people will go to space in 2020. No. Yes. 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 Uh, no. Yes. No. Uh, no. Uh, no. Internet. <laughs> Internet. A hundred yes. people in space in 2020. Yes. No. Or no? <clears throat> yes. I'm this is be, why I want the I am going to be an optimist for the first like, time this year <laughs> and say yes. And I'll eat the mustard uh, this time, but like, no. Wait, is that, is that an official so. bet between you and Jared? Is there oh, a, a mustard bet of sorts occurring right now? I mean, mustard they're all bet. called mustard bets at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're like, that's the future Because we lost bets. too much money to Peter Beck last time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Never bet against Rocket Lab. That was, the, that was my takeaway in 2019. <laughs> you're welcome, um, Peter. I'm also looking forward to what will hopefully be the kickstart of the renaissance for exoplanet hunts. I was going to say And looking that. for that. Because you've got <laughs> TESS, the Transient yes. Exoplanet Survey Satellite, mm -hmm. uh, which is really starting to crank out the data mm -hmm. now. Like, it's already at a thousand planet candidates. Yeah. And they're, like, just barely sifting through the data. That's, like, a mm -hmm. quarter of what Kepler has found in its entirety. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. And that's, like... Before James one Webb. That's, like, like that's one before, frame. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then also frame. the European Space Agency is about to launch... Um, a a uh, um, uh, uh, space telescope mm -hmm. on I think it's Tuesday actually called Cheops characterizing exoplanets um, and that's going to also be very very cool because that's going to actually like look at sizes and very precisely try to figure things out like what's the mass mm -hmm. what what atmosphere should even potentially be there if they can massage that data enough so that's going to be really really cool with it um, I'm also looking forward to okay. How do I say this? Uh, both looking forward to and dreading, um, in some cases, the increase of launch cadence, which should occur in 2020. Why are you dreading that? Uh, because, because he's going to have to report on them. <laughs> well, first of all, I have to report <laughs> on them. So the launch damn, is going to be a, a launch 27 minute. Well, yeah. no, what we'll do is we'll break launches out of the new. What, wouldn't that be cool? Exactly. If, where there's so many that. launches, yeah. we actually have to break it into its own show. I would love that to be a, a show of nothing do. but launches. Yep. That's exactly. all it is. Yeah. Um, and oh, then. I'm, I'm dreading it because, holy smokes, uh, Starlink. Um, I think that's really all I have oh, to say yeah. um, in that respect, which is that there are things that are happening. You and I are an opposing uh, sides of that particular argument. I, 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 no, I don't mm. feel like we are an opposing sides. It's mm. just we have, different, we have different arguments. And in my opinion, Starlink is a Kobayashi Maru. No, it's a no-win situation mm. for anybody involved. Mm. That is a magical so. Star Trek reference, and yeah. I love every moment I mean, of that. seriously, look at that. Starlink, uh, yeah. You can't pull data out with that. No, so. but it's also very pretty. Isn't there also it one is very web? pretty, though. <laughs> one web um, is like, like Starlink and one web or and Europe. Kuiper, and Kuiper right. and all of the other stuff that's coming up. It's just one of those things that's like... Yeah, here's the thing that astronomers are going to have to understand. It's not just a SpaceX thing. This is no. happening. It is. This it's is happening. Other, it is happening. Yeah. And there's yeah, nothing no. they can do to stop it. And You're right. yelling at the top of their lungs only makes it worse for them. Because yes. now people don't want to listen to them anymore. Yes, but the thing is, it, one of the things about this is that this is not some sort of new idea. I mean, mm -hmm. I know when Shotwell got in front of everybody and said, we didn't think about mm -hmm. this, astronomers didn't think about this, that's HS. Because, yeah, we've been thinking about it. There's papers that go all the way back to the early 90s in astronomy that talk about mega constellations and things like that. We had to yeah. contend with iridium in the mid-90s as well, working with that. So this is, this is not some new ideas. And yet able to contend with iridium. So, well, solutions found. Iridium was 88 satellites total. I mean, we've got to figure out, uh, look. No, but my, my point is problem found a solution. Solution, yes. Problem might be able to find a solution. Not saying we will find a solution, but like... Exactly. Yeah. But and, you know, with the, with the upcoming flight, they're going to have one dark satellite on there, which is, which, that's progress. It's that is, go. Yeah. That's definitely, like, incredibly appreciated that they're actually, like, putting some effort into trying to make that happen. But at the same time, it's just very... I, I just find it very disingenuous in the idea that nobody thought that this was going to happen. Like... Seriously, like astronomers have been talking about it since the mid '90s, and then the people who want to build a city on Mars didn't think about this. Like they overlooked this part. Like, hmm. come on, get real. Like, don't, don't, don't shove that in. in don't make astronomers and SpaceX look stupid at the same time. <laughs> Seriously, fair. So, fair. Wow. so. Yeah. <laughs> now, Athena, before we go into yeah. your favorite 2020 stuff uh, in the comments, we had the bet as to whether there will be 100 people. No, just in put it in the host. Oh, you put it all in host? I'm near positive. <laughs> oh, no, not even close. All right, so let's see here. Uh, I got to scroll yeah, back. Yeah, tiny up. round table. Three to be exact. So, what's our bet for the next tiny round table? So, would there be, uh, would there be 100 people? It's 
No, bet on it. That's funny. Uh, no, no, not in 2020. James says it's doable. Um, no, no, <laughs> so yes. <many> no's. <laughs> now, counting suborbital, yes. Now, uh, yeah, right? The, the bet isn't into orbit. The bet no, is over space. The bet is space, space, and we would say the, the proper Kármán line. Not the 100-kilometer yeah. Kármán line. That is not no, the actual Kármán line. Nope. The proper Kármán line, which is somewhere around, it, will, it fluctuates is the problem, 50. but yeah. We'll 50 say, miles, 50, or you could do what Theodore von Kármán himself calculated, which was 83.1 kilometers. Right, so, right. And, and Virgin Galactic will pass that. And they have passed it. He was ready for yes. that. That was, that was great. That was, that was a moment that I just enjoyed. Uh, so Virgin Galactic flights will count towards humans in space. Yes. Eight at a time, I believe it is. Because uh, it's pilot, co-pilot. It's, oh, it's six passengers. Uh, yeah, it would be eight at a time. Yeah. But yeah. So. are we counting pilot, dupes? Because if you have a single pilot, say, co-pilot. I don't think we should count dupes. So no people. dupes. Yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah, no pilot. duplications. Because no we don't, pilot, in the overall. Once. So okay, yeah. so in other words, you're going from 500 astronauts to 600 astronauts in the year 2020. That's yes. what you're saying. Yes, or whatever number. Yeah, exactly. It's just over 500 right now. Yep. I think it's like 503 Absolutely. or 508. Uh, like may that. I be bold and say that I think it'll cross over 700? How many uh, of these things do you want to eat? <laughs> I mean, I, I like All right, we're going to call that a bet extension. So the, the original bet is for, all right, so hang on. Well, let's go back to our chat room. Because there's a whole lot so of sick. no, Jared, just so you know. Oh, I don't care. Uh, and then continuing in the chat, <laughs> it, we've got no, no. No in 2020, but yes in 2021. Okay. Um, and a no, Virgin doesn't pass the Kármán line. Actually, they do. They just don't pass the 100-kilometer line, which is not the Kármán line. Yes, because um, we believe in what thing. Theodore von Kármán himself said. Uh, right. Sadly, a no. <laughs> um, Who's the one that said 100 uh, kilometers? Then? Oh, Tony. <laughs> all 100 will be on one SpaceX wow. starship. There's something to consider that I now, hadn't thought of. That's ambitious. That's very ambitious. Now, that, that's probably not going to happen in no. 2020. <laughs> I don't think SpaceX has even said that. But, no. like, think of that in a moment, where the total number of humans in space right now is a little over 500. In one flight of SpaceX, once they have, like, 100 people on board, one-fifth of all of the people who have ever been to space will be on that one flight. Again, assuming That's there's crazy. no duplicates. Dada, is it actually 550? It's something yeah. close to that. So. Um, a 3D that. blaster very specifically says 72 persons. Wow. I like that. Uh, Vernon okay. says maybe in 2022. Do DNA samples count? I feel like no, that's disingenuous. An actual living meat bag, I yeah. think, is what we're talking about here. Definitely. Um, uh, let's see here. Graham says max 30 people. Juggling lesson says fewer than 20 human meat bags in human orbit. In orbit is not the bet, though. Yeah, we're not betting. We're not orbit. betting orbit. We're, we're betting, betting overall. Over in space. Crossing that point. Yeah. Crossing into space. Suborbital counts. Uh, 47 and a half people. A half, okay. A half a people. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Well, I guess I, they'll get like... The icon tells you everything with that one. <laughs> I think uh, they'll get no. like... They'll, they'll just get to the point where like the common line like reaches the waist. In the, uh, Troy yeah, says so. yes. Nice Corvettes, Troy. Um, Vernon says, well, it depends on what we mean by space. I think we've, uh, uh, done that. And I think, <laughs> Gosh, yeah. what is space? What How is do space? we define space? <laughs> oh, that's so, actually oh. a very deep question. Okay. Go on. Uh, that is. Blom, blom. Yeah. What are you looking forward okay. to in 20 years? Um, 20 years in 20 years. Uh, well, for 2020, I'm definitely excited for, uh, like you were mentioning, exoplanets. That's one of my main excited things about right now. It's just because TESS is bringing back so much information. And then, am I correct about this, but is James Webb going to be launching an Ariane 6? 2021. 2021. On an Ariane 5. Ariane yeah. 5. March. You just, Got it. You could have just stopped it. Is James Webb going to be launching? March 30th. No, it's going to launch. Okay. Sure. <laughs> it, it better. I sure hope um, so. It will. James hey, well. Webb, Space uh, Launch System, James Webb, space. which one goes first? Oh, God. Okay, let's talk about Dragonfly. Oh, no, 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 no. So goes first? Dragonfly. James Webb or Space Launch System? James Webb. Uh, yeah? James Webb. Yeah, James yeah. Webb. Yeah, yeah. So. Because it's, I mean, it's been working on for so long and there's no humans involved as far as like going to space. I yeah, mean, first, it's, first flight of Space Launch System will not have humans on board. It's not going to be humans? No. Oh. But well, it's a human rated vehicle. Think. Apparently. Uh, hang but on, the hang launch vehicle is already made and ready. That that's gonna be launching James Webb. So I, I would say James Webb. Well, James Webb's not fully ready yet. It's not. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, it's I not mean, ready I've, seen, I've seen it. Ain't ready. I mean, it's I mean, it's, it's oh, sitting. It, it is it is sitting in that configuration right now in a gigantic clean and room. And then it has to collapse, about right? twenty miles west of us here yes. in the wow. LA area. And it is awesome. Wait, yeah, it's amazing. It? it's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, it's so where cool is to it see again? it. Uh, it's at Northrop Grumman's facility in El Segundo. Go so if there. you're planning an Ocean's Eleven style heist, I just told you everything you need to know. 
So. I don't know how you could even begin to think about heisting that thing. Well, Anyhow. that's why you need the Ocean's Eleven crew to do All right, so our, our, uh, <laughs> we, will, we will continue that bet later. I, I actually think that's an interesting one. Space Launch System or uh, JWS. I guess we're going to have to do all these bets fun. in the post show. We're going to have to get a bet tracker. Which if you're a member, yeah, you a can see tracker, that. Yeah, a bet tracker, yeah. All right, so uh, um, you're excited for James Webb. I forgot about everything else I was going to say now. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I, keep, I keep trying to remind myself of everything. There's just so many conversations happening. Um, well, Wait. I am excited for Ariane 6 coming out because that's going to be, I think, the end of the year. So it's going to be a whole new, uh, you know, obviously launcher. Mm -hmm. And then... Which is an else? answer to SpaceX, essentially, right? Yes. But then not fully reusable. Not fully reusable. So yeah. what did they answer there? Cost. Did they? Um, Supposedly. It's supposed to be $90 million per okay. yeah. flight. Yeah. So. Non-subsidized. Now that I don't know. Because I, that matters. I am not. I'm not an expert in terms of Ariane Space and their dealings with Europe. So uh, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. You said that so shiftily, though. <laughs> just everyone. Well, I just. I legitimately <laughs> don't know. So. No, I know, and I know you well enough to know that. But you're like, I don't know anything about this at all. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Well, I think cool. that's more. I think that was more just me disappointed in myself that I don't. Well, and you should be. So, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Homework. Yeah, thank um, you. I'm looking so. forward to also uh, Dragonfly. So going to Titan. That's going to be for a while, but I'm excited for seeing kind of like more of its development. Wait, wait. Which and one's Dragonfly? Just, that's the one that Dragonfly, goes. Dragonfly. It's that gonna burrows, be, No, no, that's no, the, the helicopter. That's the drone. The Nuclear power drone. Yeah, yeah that's it's like the quadrocopter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so cool. I'm so excited. I should have worn my T-shirt. Oh, I have a T-shirt. I want a little cool. Dragonfly model drone. Oh, wait, what, what are they making that? That would be cool. Maybe I could put I a little plutonium in it, too. <gasps> I could grab my Americanium 241 from the the uh, uh, smoke detector and stick it in This there image is like so it. resolution. I, I love resolution. that you know that. I can't that. tell what's going on, but like, there's a bunch Ooh. of stuff happening. Yeah, that's so. that's its like pathway. So like when it arrives, you need a parachute, because that's how we arrive. And yeah, look at it. Lands, and then it's look at so cool. Yeah. That would be a really cool drone toy. We should... Definitely like CPU uh, 2K6 is asking, that. what about the Mars 2020 rover? Yes! Oh, yeah, Whoa! a very valid. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm slightly you like to follow up with that? It. <laughs> Couldn't so, tell. Because uh, it's launching in July, and I actually want to try to fly out and see the launch. So oh, I would it's love in July. to try to do that. So What is it yeah. launching on again? Uh, An Atlas, 5, Atlas 5, 5. 541 configuration. What's okay. that mean, Jared? That means it has a five meter payload fairing, four solid rocket motors, and a single engine Centaur upper stage. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. How come oh, they're going to fly the first uh, vehicle in a two configuration. Um, in just a few, in just a, like a week and a half. Yeah. With Starliner, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although that's uh -oh. not the first dual engine Centaur upper stage. I thought it was the that's first. That's just the first one in a really long time. Oh, I thought it was the first dual yeah. engine Centaur. Yeah. yeah, they used to fly them back in the, like the 90s. I think in the early aughts, too, they had a couple. Oh, all right. Well, never so, mind. Take it all yeah. back. Sorry. Everything Sorry. Crushed womp, womp. Cross my house and dreams. Yeah. All right. Well. Mars 2020. <laughs> so or, or curiosity. I'm not oh, sure. my God. It's the, it's the helicopter. It's the helicopter. The, hel the actual helicopter they're gonna fly on it. I for totally forgot about Carbon it. Carbon fiber blades, look at that. Ooh. Yeah, and it's gonna, it's gonna fly out in like scout areas for the rover to go, but it's also gonna like take pictures of the rover in the environment there as well. Oh my God, that's, that's gonna what be I'm so cool. Oh cool. yeah, really, that's gonna be really awesome. That, it's so great. And then and you know the internet's gonna go, fake. Yeah, okay. How could they do that? It's fake. So I'll just do my <laughs> usual thing, which is I don't care what the internet says. Um, and then so this, starts. this is so cool because this is like literally like a program that's like totally a JPL kind of thing because they yeah. were basically like do you guys think that we could get a, a rover a, a helicopter to work on Mars and they're like yeah let's let's attach like these blades to a CubeSat and we'll just stick it in our thermal vacuum chamber pump out all the air to its Mars atmosphere and then we'll just see if it can fly and it flew and then NASA's like okay here's 20 million make it happen Wow. and JPL was like oh we got like four months to do this okay and they did it yeah but if anyone that's can amazing. do it it's JPL, JPL. yeah Absolutely. that's right never so. Two things, never bet against Rocket Lab, never bet against JPL, yep. never. Wow. Yep. Also, you know they're gonna mess with you somehow. So in its flight pattern, there'll be some Morse code that says JPL or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know it, you know they did something. There's some JPL Easter egg on that thing. They found a way to, to put it in there. Yeah, yeah, that was probably wow. one of the most accurate things in The Martian, which is the JPL gets it done. Well, yeah, it's also nice. the most accurate thing ever said on this show. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Cool. I mean, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> That's hilarious. Sorry. Um, uh, no, I, uh, I, I think I'm also looking forward to the abundance of human spaceflight in 2020. Mm, yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to be... A hundred? 
No, I really right. don't in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I'm really excited to see astronauts in the Under Armour Virgin Galactic, like, blue yes. space flight suits. I was surprised it was blue. I figured it was Virgin Galactic. It would be, like, red? like black or red. <laughs> black or like, red, I think, would be like, cool. I, I, no, it, wouldn't, it shouldn't be white. No, it shouldn't. None like, of them should be white. There's hints of blue on White Knight, so I guess that's where they get hints of blue that. from. It's and the gold, it's like oh I mean, yeah, it's not I, bad. It's uh, not bad, but I, I was like really expecting neat. like this sleek future 2001 space odyssey. That's gonna make my butt look big. <laughs> well, yeah, because <laughs> this are, woman is Athena so size, so. and you are not, or this man, this man is a guy. Oh. Virgin, that's a dude. This I've seen hard the, to the tell. female I mean, model photos. You can have hair that short. And they're pretty cool. They're like running. Whatever. You can just do whatever you want. Either way, this human is like Athena size, <laughs> and none of us are. Um, Excuse me. We should <laughs> get Virgin Galactic to give us a few of these, and then we'll wear them on set anytime yeah. we do news. So you can see yeah. a real yeah. person yeah. wearing them? You know, ironically, I, mean, I actually missed the shoot for this. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So. Get on that. My, yeah. yeah. You oh, there you go. Uh, there you go. Richard Branson wearing it. And he looks massive Whoa, comparatively the ex- the to everyone else. The expanse sure has changed since it went to <laughs> The expanse. You're not oh wrong. It just going to look like that. Oh, my gosh. Um, but I'm also, I'm also excited, again, for the human moment of Under Armour uh, yeah. putting out, like, the, for e- everyday people, like, the shoes that they made or a variation of the shoes, oh, yeah. boots. Um, I'll buy it. Adidas. Yeah, I will totally buy I will buy Smurf shoes. It's yeah, I was going to say, Adidas. I'm already wearing purple Birkenstocks. So like, it's the same thing. Adidas today. literally came out with shoes to work with Boeing Starliners. Yes. Right. Yes. Suit. yes. Right. So, yep. like, how cool is that? Right. Yeah. I That's think awesome. Stuff. I love They're those so little moments. Those are too. sick. Uh, yeah. How much? So, um, Under if Armour. I wear those. How much Under Armour? I will buy some. If I wear those at SpaceX, would I catch fire when I enter the building? Huh. <laughs> Oh, no, I, I actually am legit. Like, I think it would be awesome if we can find someone at Virgin Galactic to help us get the spacesuits. We should wear the yeah. spacesuits on this show during news. And that should be our regular outfit that we always yeah. wear week after week. Yeah. yeah. Everyone who's on camera, who's on this set, would be required to wear it. Okay. Yeah, I'm attempting to try and get some. Uh, well, I'll tell you one thing. If you, contacts. like, get those shoes, they are not staying here. <laughs> if I'm around. So. You're saying they will be Don't know if you noticed. Uh, Don't be well worn. Yep. Kinda, the man kinda, wears a size 13 anyway and can't fit into her size 10s no matter what. Yeah, well, you know. So they can stay here just fine. Um, no, like, uh, so. yeah, I, I'm excited for uh, the demo mission two, uh, the potential of uh, mission one, um, you know, yeah, I'm I'm excited about the humans flying, but like mm-hmm. again, that's me. That's that's what I get excited about. Um, but I I am really excited about this kind of like crazy fashion statement and anything else that comes from it. Um, I just recently saw that Gillette has a moon landing anniversary uh, razor, and I was like, what? yes, I need one of those. Like, which is the dumbest thing ever. Is 2020 the year that we're gonna start to see space fashion? I mean, maybe. Are we, we not all right? Are we not already? We're, we're, kind of, we're already there. Like, I feel yeah. like it's starting to well, eat in a little bit. Well, now Ariana right? Grande having a song called NASA. She's yeah. Like, I'll be the universe and you'll be NASA. Anyway, right? So I feel like it's you know already. It <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> you'll be the universe and I'll be NASA. Wait, I no, mean, it's the other way around. I'll be the universe and you'll be NASA. Anyway. I mean, just in yeah, shoes, it's popular, last year, Vans teamed up with NASA right. and released mm-hmm. an entire NASA collection. Those were like yeah. insta sold out. Too, yes. From what and I, mm-hmm. I went to 13 different van stores yeah. to find a pair. Same. So, and I, I, I got one. You got but one, yeah. Jesus, that was hard to it's get it. Tough. Um, also, Nike is selling a NASA shoe right now as well. Yeah. So this is this is not like something yeah. new. So other yeah. than yeah. it having the wrong logo, I think that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I mean that actually on that shoe that does look. Good. It, that logo is yeah. better. Yeah. Amazing. I was gonna say not only does it look good on that shoe, it looks like good on worm. anything. So <laughs> I think the worm is very. So just so I mean, <laughs> yeah. There's the not Nike that one. Not I like. That one. Okay, I like those. those. I would get caught in those. Uh, these are the ones I wanted. So. I had them on pre-order, and all uh, of a sudden they vanished, and I was like, Oh yeah, uh, you bet they vanished. It was. So. I was so upset. I put yeah. down the. Yeah, it's not. I I like this simple. I like this simple style. Of the other one. Yeah, they're a bit. Like they're more yeah. of a basketball yeah. kind of shoe. Yeah, yeah you're not a sneakerhead. Well. Yeah, those so. I was thinking. Those about. Those are also the Nikes as well. Different mm-hmm. color. That was. That was. Yeah. I think what you probably reserved, Athena. Was yeah. That. Those are the, nice. I like those. So I didn't get that yeah. tracks. Also, it has the correct logo. Yeah. Yeah. So. Nice. Eh, it's okay. <laughs> so yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I like those. Definitely. Yeah. Those are. I want. Yeah. I think space fashion's already kind of been out for probably the past like few years, and now it's just like. 
booming. The fact that we could find it at, like in almost I, any store. I'm yeah, Forever 21 has got Forever like a huge section yeah. all the time for like no good reason. Urban yeah. Outfitters, like you can get NASA meatball t-shirts at Target. Yeah, Is there a it's way readily that we can accessible. Make this fashion also help educate people on what we're doing in space? Like is there a way to tie those two together or is it just going to end up being like, yeah, space stuff, look how cool it is and then people buy it and just don't never do I don't know. I, I think it almost doesn't matter though, right? Because if space fashion is cool and enough people get excited about space fashion, then eventually it doesn't matter. It's so infiltrated into the, our common psyche. Mm -hmm. Oh you my know God. What I'm saying? It's like a vocabulary now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, people will research. Held ask that is hilar hilarious. <laughs> Forever 21 months away. <laughs> Uh, oh, wow. Is that how long it's going to take us to get those Under Armour shoes? That is a pretty good place to end <sighs> the show on. Um, uh, you know, I'm excited for 2020 because you're all going to bother me to do my thing, even though I'm hosting yes. the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing, though. Uh, I'm excited for the additional ripples that we're going to create through hum humanity because that's the, the analogy I'm using for this particular Yeah, but show. then you switch to tickles. And then I switch to tickles. Don't know why. Just saying. I did. The tickles, Don't know why. The tickles come in ripples. I'm excited for the extra moments. I think DM2, Crew 1, um, anything that's putting humans into space and like moving that cadence faster and faster and faster. I think it's it's about freaking time that mm -hmm. humans live and work in space. Yep. We don't just go to space. We don't just have up to seven astronauts. Well, I suppose up to 14 astronauts on the space station. We have hundreds of people living and working in space followed by thousands of people living and working in space. And I'm not sure if 2020 is quite the year where we, we, we definitely don't get there in 2020, right. no. but we st we're, we're creating those foundation movements. Yep. Like a lot of this work has already been done in the years prior, and 2020 is kind of the year where we start to visually be able to see mm -hmm. the fruits of that labor. And then I think that will open up kind of the consciousness of humanity going, oh, I see where they were going with yeah. this. I yeah. understand no, exactly this understand. now. Tomorrow is going to be exciting. Tomorrow is going to be better. Tomorrow is going to be incredible, and hopefully, it can get us out of this kind of rut that we put ourselves. Yeah, in. I'm really, yeah. I'm really hoping that it's the beginning of like Gerard K. O'Neill's High Frontier. Mm, you know, mm -hmm. like yeah. that, that kind of level of people leaving the Earth. I yeah. hope that 2020 is like that's the start to it. Yeah, yeah, 40 years late, but better late than never. Uh, yep. I'll also say that 2020, we're going to be changing up tomorrow a bit. Um, some people know what's, well, no one knows what's going on, but in my head, and even then I'm not entirely sure what's going on. So, uh, we will be having a hangout for all of our citizens, that's for anyone who's on Patreon or any of our YouTube members, before the end, before the, before the end, before the end of the year. Uh, so if you would like to watch that, and like we did, all, I did all of these polls this last week of what's your favorite, what's your least favorite, you know, wh what do you want to change, what do you, all of this stuff, I will be bringing all that data in and I'll tell you how I was using that data to form kind of the future decisions of the show, what we're going to do. Uh, all new graphics, so you're going to get an opportunity to see some of that. So new clothes, new yep. intros, including for the, uh, these shows, like we're, we're changing a bunch of stuff. We're keeping the stuff that you guys love and we're tweaking the stuff that you guys don't love. So if you would like to watch that kind of pre-show and help form the shows of tomorrow, consider sub subscribing, ideally on YouTube, and you can do that over at uh, youtube.com slash tmro slash join. And speaking of, there are a bunch of people who helped to make this show happen. These are the Escape Velocity citizens, and these are the people who uh, are contributing on YouTube. They are our largest contributors, so thank you to everyone. Also, starting next year, this, this is all gonna flip around, so if you're on YouTube, you're gonna go above the patrons. So if you wanna be at the top of the list, make sure you're on YouTube. And the reason we're pushing YouTube over Patreon is because YouTube cares about us, YouTube has reached out, YouTube has done one-on-one -on -one things with us, and Patreon hasn't done anything. I reach out to them and it goes into silence. And when they do come back, it's either a form letter or they just clearly do not care about us at all. Since YouTube actually does care, we're gonna try to, you know, that's where we're moving to. We're moving yep. to YouTube. We do really cool things with YouTube. Makes my life a little bit more miserable because their backend stuff, quite frankly, isn't as good as Patreon stuff, but that's okay. And yeah, to help contribute to the shows tomorrow, head on over to youtube.com slash tmro slash join. This is our last live show of 2019. I hope everyone had a great time. Y'all had said that you wanted a round table again. This was chaos. I hope you enjoyed the chaos. Yes. I think you're gonna see a lot more of this chaos when it comes to round tables in 2020. And to learn what I'm doing again, head on over and become a YouTube member. On that note, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in 2020.